Ahead of their Asia-Pacific heavyweight title in October 2009, heavyweight fighters David Tua and Shane Cameron turned their press conference into trash talk. Yeah, these two don't see eye to eye. Pull well, yourself a professional, man. How long have you been out of the ring for? I'm making a difference. Like I said, I wasn't beaten up like you. <laughs> well, I've seen that Lennox Lewis fight, man. You took a hiding. It's 74 days till the fight, but the pair couldn't help firing a few early shots. Two are still comparing the mountain warrior to a mountain goat, offering it as an excuse for why he was late to the press conference. I got a text about 2.30 this morning. If you want to fight, come to the mountains of Gisborne. And then there's signs, the mountain goat. I was up on that hill with about one, one o'clock this morning. I seen you struggling trying to get up to the goat, so you were nowhere to be seen, mate. You know, you were huffing and puffing. Looked like you were going to have a heart attack, so... Uh... Even their managers were not left out in the trash talk. There's a little bullet here on the main of my keychain. We know the boy's got some big guns, but the idea is that he fires the bullets. And Lee's talking about his bullets, but look at this. He's got lights on, little lights on it. I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be lights out. David Tua, that's what's going to happen. However, Tua dominated the fight and floored Cameron with a flurry of punches in the final minute of the opening round. Oh, and he got him again. Shane's ready to go. And he's down in round one. Shane's in a heap of trouble. He Cameron got back to his feet, but Tua picked up right where he left until the bell. In round two, Tua unloaded another flurry of punches similar to the first one, forcing the referee to stop the contest as Cameron went down to the canvas. In March 2017, David Lemieux and Curtis Stevens met for the WBO Intercontinental Middleweight title at Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, New York. When Stevens was asked what his opponent should expect during a pre-fight interview, he told the reporter that he should expect pain. What can he expect from the Cerebral Assassin? Oh, pain. Pain. You know when I'm two fakes? You ever had a bad toothache that you uh, didn't go get taken out just yet? Or you had a surgery and they didn't give you no uh, medicine to uh, help you cope with it? One of them type of pains. Pain that's, uh, you need something to come in your body to take it away. A straight pain, though. Unfortunately, he was the one who was left in pain in just three rounds, as Lemieux connected with a thunderous left hand that landed flush on his face and knocked him out cold under the ropes. In January 2007, Kelly Pavlik and Jose Luis Zertuche met at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. Zertucci would occasionally lift his hands in the air after he was caught by shots from Pavlik. He did it in the final seconds of the sixth round, but he was shortly caught by a left-right combination from Pavlik that sent him to the canvas. Right now, uh, all he needs to be doing is setting up some serious power shots uh, and going through with it. You were talking about, and I said there was still time, and there it was. You know, the Chuchi was relaxed a bit. Boom! Didn't see that right hand coming over the top. Again in the eighth round, Zertucci reacted to punches from Pavlik by lifting his hands in the air, calling for more shots. He got what he deserved moments later, after Pavlik floored him with a four-punch combination that knocked him out cold on his feet before crashing to the canvas. He 
In a WBC Super Middleweight elimination match, David Benavides and Rogelio Medina squared off at Laredo Energy Arena in Texas. Medina gave Benavides one of his toughest fights, constantly bullying him into the ropes. However, while backed against the ropes in the fourth round, Benavides staggered Medina with a combination, but Medina reacted by making a gesture as if to say, bring it on. This is special. This is brutal and beautiful at the same time. Medina, we expected this from both fighters. Incredible. And that ends the fourth. Benavides did exactly that and scored the first knockdown in the sixth round. Again, Benavides dropped Medina to his knees in the seventh round with a right uppercut, but Medina got back to his feet and was ready to continue fighting. He always has a puncher's chance, and that is that provider. Finally, Benavides stopped the fight in the eighth round with a brutal eight-punch combination that started with a left right to the body, sending Medina crumpling to the canvas under the bottom row. In May 1994, Roy Jones Jr. made the first defense of his IBF World Middleweight title against Thomas Tate at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. However, Tate didn't seem to take the fight seriously as he was busy dancing during the pre-fight announcement. Nine victories, 21 for one ranked contender in the world. Jones caught Tate with a left hook to the chin early in the second round. Tate went down and he was able to beat the referee's count, but he remained unstable, forcing his trainer to stop the fight. Ricardo Mayorga is famous for his trash talk in the build-up to most of his fights, but in the case of his rematch with Shane Mosley in August 2015, he took it too far. <laughs> he said that he would like to um, personally thank um, the new um, promoter, uh, um, Trista, and that um, he'd like to really um, show her uh, how it's done. In one, in one, in three minutes, que es un round suficiente para ganarle. He said he's going to fight with him for three rounds if he's... Um, valiant enough to make it for three rounds. If not, he'll just knock him out in the first. Por dicha tiene el hijo aquí para que lo recoja cuando lo noquee. Tiene el hijo aquí para que el hijo lo, so, lo levante cuando lo noquee. So that his son, St. Junior, can pick him up after um, the fight and help him up. Papá, finito ya, no más papá. You're not going to have a dad anymore. <laughs> Voy a darle. Te voy a pesar 1.58 para matarte. He's going to weigh 158 pounds to kill him. He even disrespected the wife and smacked her from behind before the two got into a brief fight. He smacked my ass. What do you mean? He smacked my ass. No, I understand. And you should have fucking killed him when he did it. I tried. Somebody who was holding me. Everybody's grabbing everybody, holding everybody back. I don't need to press charges. There's nothing that a cop's going to do more than what he's going to do. And you're going to fucking right. kill his ass, beat his fucking ass. <laughs> I'm gonna I want to just fucking see kicking his butt, like seriously, on the ground. I don't care. There's no ref stopping it. Fucking kill his ass. <laughs> Mosley, however, got his revenge during their bout. In the sixth round, Mosley landed a left to the body, and Mayorga went down in pain where he was counted out. 40 somethings in here will both appear weary and maybe oh. full. And down goes Mayorga. He's claiming a low blow. He's claiming a low blow. Referee is counting. Says no. He's not going to get up. 
In June 2008, Arthur Abraham and Edison Miranda had a rematch at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Your belt is looking good. Shake hands. God bless. Oh. Miranda was caught by a right hook in the third round by Abraham, but he reacted by beating his chest. However, coming into the fourth round, Abraham floored Miranda twice in the first minute with left hooks. Shortly after the second knockdown, Miranda was back on his feet to continue fighting, but Abraham ended the fight for good with another right-left combination, forcing the referee to wave the fight over immediately. He will get you or you will get him. He got gotten tonight by this man who did it with an unlikely punch, counter left hooks. He's not a big left hook artist, but he landed them tonight and they were too much for Edison Miranda. In 2015, undefeated Commonwealth light welterweight champion Josh Taylor and undefeated WBC silver light welterweight champion O'Hara Davies met at Brayhead Arena in Glasgow with both titles at stake. Before the fight, Davies boasted that he hits harder, that he is sharper and smarter than his opponent. I hit harder than him, I'm a lot sharper than him, and I'm a lot smarter than him. <laughs> I think that's quite funny. You've never seen me get hurt, you've never seen me take a count, you've never seen me really get hit. How he thinks that he's going to be knocking me out, I don't understand. Don't get any judges because they're not going to be needed. If there's no need for the judges, it's not me, it's getting knocked out. There's only one winner and that's, that's me, Josh Taylor. The type of talking is over. The bad blood between the two continued at their way and during the stare down as they briefly got into a fight. Taylor, however, dominated the fight landing an impressive body shot in the opening round, which Davies shook his head in response. That's a discaliber body shot there from Taylor. Davies. Taylor floored Davies in the third round, but he rose to take a standing count before being saved by the bell. Beautiful movement from Josh Taylor. Oh, Davies is staggered. Taylor has him He's in the down. corner. Davies is down at the end of the third. <laughs> Taylor continued to dominate the fight and sent Davies to the canvas for a second time with a right hook in round seven. Although Davies got back to his feet, he was weary of the punishments and turned his back. Taylor pursued his opponent, but the referee stepped in and stopped the contest immediately. Back in November 1986, Mike Tyson got his first shot at a world title against Trevor Burbick, who was the WBC heavyweight champion. Tyson came out firing from the opening bell, but Burbick managed to withstand the initial onslaught and even signaled the challenger to throw more punches. Burbick immediately got what he asked for as Tyson rocked him with a four-punch combination. Burbick immediately got what he asked for as Tyson rocked him with a four-punch combination. After the bell, Burbick continued taunting Tyson as he returned to his corner. But Tyson picked up right where he left off in the second round flooring Burbick with a flurry of punches. Burbick got back to his feet, but Tyson sent him to the canvas for good with a right to the body followed by a left hook.
In September 2011, Victor Ortiz made the first defense of his WBC welterweight title against Floyd Mayweather at the MGM Grand. During the build-up to the fight, Ortiz said if Mayweather is a beast, then he is a monster. He promised to knock Mayweather out and walk away with his championship. Hey, Mayweather's a beast, but I'm a monster. So, with that said and done, I don't care if Mr. Mayweather wants to box, I'll box. He wants to bang, I'll bang. At the end of it all, I'm walking away with that championship. Because I am the new WBC champion of the world, and there's nobody that will pry that motherfucker out of my hands. You keep that in mind. You can keep that in mind. I'm gonna do this for all the Mexican people, all the American people, and all the people that come along with that. You know what? I'm just tired of keeping my mouth closed and every time I do, somebody has something bad to say. But in this point in time, I'm Mexican to the fullest, proud of it, and I'm gonna show you all you people how I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna knock this dude out. If, if he wants to box, I'm gonna box him. If he wants to get knocked out, let's do the damn thing. You wanna dance, we can dance. Not a problem. Mayweather was in control for the first three rounds, but Ortiz found success in the fourth round, backing him into the corner and intentionally hitting him with a headbutt. The referee called a timeout and Ortiz hugged Mayweather to apologize. When the referee signaled that the fight should continue, Ortiz wanted to hug Mayweather for a second time, but Mayweather unloaded a left hook, followed by another right hand to win the fight. Which of these fights is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to never miss another interesting update from this channel.